Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Crank and Boom podcast. Tao here, your host. This week, we're diving back into part two of our two part series on brick and mortar locations. So, today, we're going to talk about what happens next once you've determined hey, maybe there is a demand for what I'm offering, not just online, but also in person, or I found the most perfect location that I want to be in and want people to come and see me or buy my product at that location. We're going to review how to kind of figure out if a brick and mortar location makes financial sense for you. We can talk about all the things that it will take to actually make your brick and mortar successful. So it comes down to doing some homework, making sure you have some contingencies in place, and then also know how you're going to operate because it's going to be a bit of an investment. After you've determined your ROI, then it's time to think about how you're going to actually function in the space so that it makes sense financially and it does everything that you are dreaming that it will do. It's so fun and exciting to dream about a space. I love conceptualizing it. I love putting everything together. I love seeing the walls go up and then seeing it come to an actual operating, breathing live thing. And I love talking to other people about opening their business because it is a lot of steps and it is a lot of things to think about. And it can be very overwhelming because everything hits you all at once, but it can be so exciting and thrilling and just a dream come true when it all comes together. So let's get into it. Moving into an actual physical space is a big step, right? Just because we are out at festivals, there's long lines, there seems to be a lot of demand, there seems to be people asking for things that it feels like this should translate, right? I'm here to tell you it doesn't always work that way. We had a cute little tent concept called Thai and Mighty. It was our Thai noodle tent that we were making stuff out of our Thai restaurant, Thai Orchid, and we were going out to festivals. And it was the funnest and best concept ever. I loved the branding. I loved how we were able to serve so fast. I basically took the concept of the noodle cart that you see in Thailand everywhere, and I was amazed how one lady could literally serve 100 people with one little noodle cart. And I just thought that would be an amazing food truck concept. So I came and did my own version and we operated out of a tent and did events for a couple summers and thought there's this much demand out here. What if we shifted our restaurant into this concept? There's a lot of other factors involved, but I will also say it did not work at all. Even though we had a huge demand in the field at all these different festivals and things, when we changed our restaurant concept to basically be the tie and mighty concept in our restaurant, it was a little bit of a disaster because we were trying to change something that people were already used to for eight years at that point and shifting it and changing it to something else that they did not ask for was definitely a mistake. What we should have done if we wanted to turn Thai and Mighty into a brick and mortar, we should have found another location so that it had its own space. Just because you have a demand out in one environment, it does not always translate to it being in a brick and mortar. So there's a lot of things to consider because when you're in a festival, we call that a semi hostage situation. It's probably good enough for most people, but is it good enough for someone to drive all the way to your location and also make a purchase? Or are they purchasing just because you happen to be there and you are the best option that is there at the time? So there was not any real science in thinking, okay, well, we've got X number of customers that we think we can bring in, or we make this much at a festival. If it translates to a brick and mortar, then it should work out. We're gonna cross our fingers and hope that people show up at our store because we really didn't know. Whenever we take on a new project, we do this exercise. What is the worst thing that could happen? And are we at peace with that worst thing that is going to happen? Those things are important to think about ahead of time because it's easy to get caught up in your dreams and think about all the best case scenarios. But it is also important to think about what are the worst case scenarios and are you at peace if those things happen? And I think that really it will 
arm you with the ability to be okay with whatever comes. Because if you've already thought through what's the worst thing that could happen, then any other thing is going to not really feel as terrible. And it's going to be easier to navigate those things because things will pop up and things will happen that are unexpected. So if you're mentally prepared for that, your chances of success are going to be much, much higher. Some important things to think about when you are looking for a space is what neighborhood you're in, the location, what is the business mix of where you're going into. That for us is extremely important. We like to find other businesses that we feel like our customer base is going to participate in because if they're already going to this other place, that just ups our chances that they might pop over and come over to our space as well. So one thing I really think is important is making sure that we have other businesses around us that help fulfill a story. I like to create a story of what is our customer's day going to look like when they have us as a part of their story for the day. So it could be we've got family in town and we're going to go down to the distillery district. We're going to get pizza, grab a beer, and then we're going to get dessert after. It could be, oh, well, there's four different restaurants in the shopping center. We want to make sure that we are the dessert place that people are going to go to after dinner. Our Clays Mill location is around a lot of schools and churches. So the story around that location is kids are going to come hang out after school or whoever is going to pick kids up from school. They're going to come by and grab ice cream after school or we're near some soccer fields. The soccer team can come hang out after after they have the soccer game on the weekend or it could be we're going to go to church, we're going to get lunch nearby and then we're going to get ice cream after. So I think it's important to figure out what is the story? What's the story that your store plays into of the area? Because we have one store that is in a neighborhood and that's also near a thoroughfare close to our local mall and a lot of other retail locations. And then our other spot is more of a destination. And there's lots of places that are successful as destinations and other places that are successful by being in the middle of foot traffic. So, you know, naturally destinations usually cost less. Usually high foot traffic areas cost more. It's all part of the analysis of how you're going to make that space work and figuring out your hours. How do you serve your clientele, your customers? And what role is your business going to play in the bigger scheme of the area? And it doesn't have to be the same because both of our locations are very different. But I feel like both of them are successful in their own ways because we have found a space that fits into the story that can be replayed over and over again for lots and lots of different people. One of the lessons I've learned as an entrepreneur is celebrating. Taking time to intentionally honor your achievements and share them with others is a big part of what makes the whole journey worth it. And one of my favorite ways to do it is with food, of course. Gold Belly is our partner in how we deliver our ice cream to customers all over the U.S. so they can make their special moments even more special wherever they are. And whatever milestone you're celebrating with your friends and family, Gold Belly has just the thing. Whether you need Guy Fieri's trash can dessert nachos for dad's birthday or Martha Stewart's famous banana pudding for your sister's baby shower, Gold Belly can ship it right to your door and make your event even more special. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offerings, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your celebration unforgettable. Hey friends, Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. 
If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. With our different projects that we have worked on within Crank and Boom and Thai Orchid, we have worked with a variety of contractors and a lot in a lot of different capacities. So for Thai Orchid, we were the general contractor. So we found subcontractors that would help do different things like plumbing, electric, drywall, framing, those sorts of things. And then on our other projects, mostly with Crank and Boom, we had a general contractor and an architect who put the space together. They were the ones that worked directly with the contractors and spoke that language. So we've kind of ran the whole gamut of how you can interact with a contractor. And it's really not that big of a secret, but any project that involves construction or contractors, you need to double your timeline and double your budget. And I have done this many times. And yet I always say to myself, this one's gonna be different. We're gonna be on time and on budget. And yet it still doesn't happen. I generally feel like we always just should set expectations that things are probably going to cost more and things just take more time. So be sure to add that into your time and money budget when you are going down that path. I think it's really important to find someone you can communicate with. And that means good constructive communication as well as difficult conversation because sometimes things go awry. I would say over communicating is a big trick that I use. Sometimes you can catch things even if you talked about something in a meeting two weeks ago, being on site, walking the site, making sure that things are in order. If something is a little out of place, it is much easier to catch in the middle of the process than when something is sealed up in a wall. So make sure that you are on the same page and that everything is being done up to the standard and the plan that you have for your space. So you've got your location, you've got the renovations done, you're ready for opening day. So how do you actually make sure that your business stays alive? Because you've already invested all this money in, you have spent more money now with no money coming in. You get to opening day and just hope that all this work that you've done is going to be worth it. And what I have found when opening a space, I would actually do a soft launch and we've done this a few different ways. We've done VIP events where friends and family will come in and help us test out our team and help us with training. And these are people who are willing to forgive you if something screws up. I would recruit some friends to come and help us run and operate just to make sure things were tidy and smooth and that everyone had a great experience so that they are happy and willing to come back. And then I would actually give yourself a few days of just being open, maybe tell a few people that you're going to be open and do a dry run that way because we made the mistake at Thai Orchid of making huge announcements of the very first day we were going to be operating and we got overrun and it was not good. We were unprepared. We just hadn't practiced and we had told the entire city and the entire city showed up. And then when they have a bad experience, they're less likely to come back even though they know it's the first day. So I think having a little bit of practice under your belt is helpful. And then I would make sure you do whatever you can to make that first impression the best. There's always buzz when a new place opens. And so you'll see your sales kind of skyrocket up for opening because everybody wants to try it. So the main goal is to make sure that they come back because there's only so many new people you can circulate through. You have to build your business on repeat customers. And the way you do that is to make sure they have an amazing experience and that your product is spot on. So usually when it comes to cash flow, when you open, it's going to kind of skyrocket because 
it's new, it's novel. People love new stuff. People love new businesses. So you'll have a boost just from the beginning and then it will drop a little bit because people, it takes time for people to come back. And because you're new, it takes time for people to find out about you. So that's why every single customer experience counts. Takeaways from part two of our going into a brick and mortar location series. Number one, are you ready for the risk? Because it is no easy, simple task to open a brick and mortar store, no matter what your product is. It is a big project and not something you should consider lightly. So be sure to ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? And then have a plan B that will bring you peace of mind. It also prepare yourself for anything that might be coming down the pipeline. Number two, do your homework. I am notorious for going with my Tau Green gut feelings, which sometimes is not always the best way to determine something. Try to do as much homework as you can. Run different financial models. Try to get as much information as you can about the area. Ask lots of questions. When I go into a space, I also will go talk to neighbors and ask, What's the landlord like? Because what you might experience with your agent is not the same as to what dealing with the actual landlord is going to be. So do your homework, ask lots of questions, try to get as much info as you can to prepare yourself. And number three, be ready to change. And our favorite word in the whole world, pivot, because things will probably not be exactly the way you thought they would be. When I opened our distillery district location. We thought we were going to have chocolate cake and red wine and people would come for dessert. Turns out people just wanted ice cream. So we no longer have red wine and chocolate cake, but we listen to what people actually wanted. We make adjustments. We still make adjustments. We've been in that space for eight years now, and we're still making adjustments and trying to find ways to better serve our customers and our team and constantly trying to improve, do things better, change as the world changes. Because if you don't ever change, the world will keep changing and it will pass you up. If you have a plan, that's great. Be ready to shift it as you need as you're going through this process. Owning and operating a physical space for your business is not for the faint of heart. I will repeat this again, not every business needs a brick and mortar location, but at the same time, it is something that is a part of your journey and your heart is pulling you towards that direction. It can be the most amazing, satisfying and thrilling experience in the whole world. I also wanna encourage you, if for some reason you try this and it does not work out or anything in your business doesn't work out, those mistakes or quote unquote failures are not attached to your self-worth. The moment I detached anything that happened into my business with my own self-love and my own self-worth was the moment that I was free. All the things that have not worked out in my business journey has had some bigger purpose, whether I learned something or it helped me figure out the direction that we should not go down or just accepting that this is life and it's full of things that don't work out. That is part of the journey. It is part of the fun and it makes it all that more satisfying when things do work out and you do achieve the things that you set out to do and you're able to live a life where you are not afraid to take the chance. So I've got a special tool for you, my spreadsheet that I created for opening our latest project, Bobby Cones, our little soft serve shop. And it was a financial startup worksheet that I used to track and keep up with all of my expenses as we were starting to open the store. So keeping up with how much equipment costs, how we ordered it, what date we ordered it, keeping track of our receipts, keeping track of spec sheets for construction, it is a tool that I just kept open on my computer during the whole construction process and helped me determine where we are budget wise. I am excited to have this tool available for you to use when you are looking for your brick and mortar. It will help you determine some things that maybe you didn't think about, but this is the actual sheet that I use. So I hope that it is useful to you and we have it available on our website, crankandboompodcast.com. So definitely go check it out. It'll also be linked in the show notes. We are so glad 
to have it as a tool for you to use in your journey. Thank you so much for listening to the Crank and Boom podcast. If you want business advice and tactics like this every week, click that follow button wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode with us. Also, if you like what you heard today, it would mean so very much to me if you would leave us a review. That helps other people find us, and I would also love to hear more about what topics you'd like for us to dive into on the show. I can't wait to meet you here again soon. Until next time, peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.